Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I consider many factors, so I have to postpone midterm. Right now, uh, homework number one, homework assignment number one, still uh, you are working on it, and uh, you have one week from today to complete it. So next Monday, I collect all the homework papers from you. You can choose turning in class in paper or submit online electronically. Uh, and, and two options you can use. Then I will complete grading and give you back on Wednesday's class. Wednesday's class, you will get it graded paper back. Yeah. After that, then we we can we we cannot start midterm. Yeah, because I really like to give you as much time as possible for you do the preparation. Yeah. Although it will be a little longer pushing closer to the final, but the most important thing is I want you to do well in this midterm test because it, it is too big. It is too big for the whole course, for the result of the whole course. Yeah. So I plan to do in this way. So here, let me describe my plan. So if you have any idea, you, you can let me know. We can do an adjustment. All right. So here, so let me talk about midterm. I plan to do in two parts. Okay. Part, let's say part A and part B. All right. Part A, remember, uh, we plan to give 25 questions for the midterm. 25 questions. Similar to the style of homework assignment number one. You know, it, it just repeat another homework assignment, but this time we use the user as the midterm. Yeah. So you, you will be. You're familiar with the style, okay? But part of A, I plan to put 15 questions. 15 questions in part A, I split two parts, and 10 questions in part B. All right, yeah, no. that two parts. Yeah. Why I split two parts, I try to give you more time, all right? I, so you will see, I will take into account many factors put in this kind of design. Part B, basically including challenging questions. Part A, basic questions. Right? The quiz type. What do I mean basic questions? The questions you see in the quizzes. That kind of basic questions. Basic understanding. Okay? 15 for that part. All right? Ch 10 question, challenging questions. You just look at the last 10 questions in the homework assignment. That kind of challenging questions. Yeah. After this, I will go through homework assignment questions, but I just explain some of the questions, relatively hard questions. Yeah. So here, in this two parts. Then, this part B, I can give you a little more time to work. Yeah, because it's challenging, so you need more time to. So part B, challenging, so work at home. Work at home with more time. More time. All right. Yeah.
How much more? Yeah, let me tell you this. Next Wednesday, when I give you a homework assignment back, that then when I get home, I make those 10 questions. I post. I make and post. All right. So the time, let me tell you, the time start. Starting time next Wednesday, July the twentieth, right? Wednesday, July the twentieth, Wednesday. I post ten challenging questions, you know, canvas in canvas. Yeah. When you go home, you can download. You work on it. You can spend a lot of time, you know, yeah, plenty of time, yeah. But challenging, although challenging, but similar to those in the homework assignment, okay? So not very challenging, okay? Reasonable challenging, yeah. reasonable challenging, all right? Yeah, and, and, and time, yes, and time, same as the basic, right? So basic, th this basic in classroom. In classroom, what time? Monday after that 20th, so 25th, all right? So the time, official time, July 25th. Yeah, it's pretty close to the end, but you know, because we do not need to wait. When we, when, you pre, when we prepare for the midterm, we can learn the new materials, right? Yeah, we can learn the new materials for our final. But the new material, I won't put into the midterm. How about that? Yeah, midterm, as I said, 3.5 module, all right? 3.5 module. 3.5, yeah, module four, part A, part B, yeah. All right, Monday. This basic part, you need to work at home, and when you turn in, turning part A, part B together, how about that? Yeah, you bring your work of part B with you when you take the part A in class. But when you turn in, put them together, give it to me. Yeah. In that way. So you can see we factor in, putting many, consider many factors, more time, challenging, but you know, I need to make sure you do part of, part of it in class. Yeah, because I can see if you really, you can do the work by yourself. Right? Yeah. But in class, those 15 questions, because relatively easier, I do not want to give you the whole afternoon period because too much time. I still, I want to cover some material. So I will use second half. Second half of the class to do this basic part, part A, basic part. Second half, okay? So you know, remember after our 10 minute break at 2.30, yeah, so let me put the, you know, start at 2.30 p.m., all right? 2.30, yeah. Turn in at 3.30, yeah, but if you need more time, I can give you a little more time, right? Because already at the end, if you really need some more time, yeah, it's possible, 10 or 15 minutes even, yeah, you just sit here, complete it in front of me, yeah. I'm okay, give you a little more time. So you don't worry about if you have enough time or not, okay? Yeah, just 
do the best you can. That's the reason we put in the second half, not first half. Second half, all right? Yeah. But, you know, normally uh, you can complete it much earlier than that, yeah, but do not feel uh, you do not have enough time. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Just, you know, do the best you can. Yeah. Open book, open notes. Okay, open book, open notes. Yeah. But do not search internet. Yeah. I do not allow you to use laptop, cell phone to do the search. Yeah, because some students, they, they, they just try to find the answers from internet, web, search engine. That's not allowed. Okay? Yeah. But book and the notes, material, our own material, all right? Our own material, yeah, it's legal. That's legal, yeah. Any question about the uh, midterm? Yeah, that's midterm. So is this second half online, or is it uh, up still up with paper, but we just take it home? No. <laughs> Second half, you have to sit here in front of me and you know, basic questions similar to quiz questions. So I hope it should not be too hard for you, right? Think about you work on a quiz in class, but quiz we have 10 questions. Here we will have 15 questions. Okay, yeah. so uh, I was kind of confused. Uh, on the board, it said work at home with more time. Um, All right, that's part B. All right, can you see? Challenging, yeah, here, all right, all right. The board, part B, 10 questions, typically challenging questions, work at home, starting time uh, after Wednesday's class, I post it, yeah, and time, same as basic, yeah. I didn't write everything out, I just talked, okay, yeah. So, is that clear? <laughs> yeah, I hope it's clear. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Because there is logic behind it, right? Yeah. Challenging questions, you need more time. So you have to do it at home. Basic questions, you can do quickly. So you have to do it in classroom. Okay? So I can see. So that's really your work. How about that? Yeah. Because I want to, you know, you really show you can master the material. Yeah. So that's what I like to see. All right? Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's, that's our modified plan. A little more complicated to explain. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, since there are a few students uh, missing today, I think two or three students missing today's class. So other than I post the video, yeah, because for the video, uh, my processing time <laughs> a little slow. Yeah, I still, I have several videos I haven't posted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, video, but uh, after that, I may post text one uh, announcement. So I put these things in my announcement. You know, so everybody, so you just look at the announcement. Yeah. For those, yeah, especially those three students, not you. You already know the details. Yeah. All right, so that is our part, the first part. Uh, second part, I want to talk about uh, homework assignment. So I don't know uh, how much I need to explain. Yeah, because most of you uh, may not have started yet. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, but let me, if you have questions, just ask me. Yeah, all right. The first question, uh, you know, uh, that's the Horner's rule type. 
But when you work, be careful. Each x term, even exponent numbers, x squared, x fourth, six. All right. Look at that special structure. Yeah. Then you should. Use some special way to get a minimum number of multiplications. Okay, yeah, yeah. Try the best we you can, and Horner rule: minimum number of multiplications. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, all right. Number two. Yes, yeah, so, I mean this one、uh, you saw several times. Yeah, so I think you know how to do it. Yeah. Number three, I just want to point something out. Yeah. Okay. Here we compare two growth functions. The first one is power function, right? The first one is a power function. The second. Exponential function. Exponential function with the base is the a. A greater than one. Okay. Although I put many zero, so one point many zero, but it is greater than one. Right? Yeah. So even that, in our examples, you you will see. Whenever we talk about exponential functions, we require the base greater than one. Okay, yeah. Then you compare power function and exponential function. Yeah. For the long run, that means when n goes to infinity, right? Yeah. Look at the behavior when n goes to infinity. Okay. Yeah. Compare limit. Look at those nine examples in module two. At the end of the module two, we did nine examples. So you can find the similar one here. Yeah. yeah. So if you study that part material, you can easily get the answer. Yeah. So that is this one. Yeah. And.、Uh, All right. Yeah. If any question you want me to explain, I just explain. If not, I if I feel, for example, if, if I I feel this one, I do not have anything to explain. All right. So you understand. You just based on the sentence na natural language understanding to answer the question. Yeah. Definitely, you need to use our material. Yeah. Number five. This one, I hope you do the calculation carefully. Ten to the ten to the tenth, <laughs> three levels. All right, yeah. Ten. The exponent number is ten to the tenth. One, ten zeros after one. One, ten zeros after one. All right. That is the exponent number. Okay, so then evaluate. Try to find the values. Do the algebra simplification. After simplification, you compare which one larger, which one smaller. Okay, yeah. So that's number five. Yeah. Number six, number seven should be easy. Yeah. Number seven, log at the denominator. That's the only special part. Yeah. Other than that, everything else is quite normal, right? The the thing is, how do you deal with this n over log of n? How do you deal with it? Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here. Yeah. Uh. 
let us look at another. Yeah, let us go to another related question. Then after that, we come back to look look at this one again. Yeah, number seven. So we will come back a little bit later. Mainly we want to look at this part. Okay. All right. Let us look at this question first. Number ten first. Yeah. Compare growth functions. Yeah. But、uh, a and b. Look at a and b. A is a log function, and b power function, right? Yeah. And to some constant, positive constant power. Yeah. This positive constant, the power exponent part, d greater than zero. D greater than zero, yeah. So this form is n to the dth power with d greater than zero. Okay, yeah. Then in one of our nine examples in module two, we did comparison. We compare log function and n to the d power function. We did that. Okay, one of the nine examples. So you will see. In that example, it will only require d positive greater than zero. Yeah. Then you will see this zero point, many zero after the decimal point, one very small, extremely small, but it's positive, right? The bottom line, it is positive. Okay. Yes. And you look at that example we did. We we take care of the positive case, no matter how small it is. Okay, don't worry about how small it is; it is positive. Yeah. Here, for the all the questions, you see, all come from our material. So, all come from our. So, do not feel we have some brand new questions. You know. Some materials we never seen before. No, the reason I mention this because I have some previous students. You know, I have some previous students. They send me email, you know, complaining. So, a lot of materials you didn't cover in class. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But my philosophy, I always. Give you questions from the materials I covered. Okay, I covered. So I can, if you ask me, I can point out, you know, what notes, page, what page, which file, which module. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. So then, now you can see. Here we compare log function and a power function with d positive constant. All right. Now then you go back to this number seven. Log function, log function. Okay. Then you think about n over a log function. And the log function, can you connect to? Some small little power function n to the d. This d positive, you know. Yeah. So you think about that. Yeah, because n is a power function, right? Yeah. Exponent one. Yeah. And the log comparable log log used to compare with another power function, but d. Very small. Think about d. Very small, comparable with log. Think about that connection. Think about connection log, and the power function with positive constant but very small positive constant. Comparable, comparable. That means they can can be put together side by side. To do the comparison, all right, log even d very small zero point zero 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 one 
we can still put them together to do comparison. All right? Think about that, that connection. Yeah. Then, if you have that kind of basic fact in your mind, then you can answer this question easily. All right? Think about it. Yeah. Here, I'm talking about connection. Connection. Yeah. When you have that connection, you need to have some comprehension capability inside yourself. Comprehension. You need to do some comprehension. Okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then you can answer this question. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so then, other questions. Yeah, question number nine. I want to point out, yeah, because if you cannot find the critical, critical knowledge piece to use, could be hard, okay? Critical knowledge piece to use. Exponential function, right? Exponential form, at least, yeah. It may not be exponential function, exponential form. Yeah, all right. But you can see uh, all four expressions. Yeah, you have four expressions. All four expressions. You can see there are several forms. Uh, the typical form here, one form you can see A the base a exponent log base a of n. Yeah. So this form covers a option, d option. How about that? Yeah. Okay, because the base is the same. Root two, root two, all right? Two base, log base also two. Alright? Yeah. So see this case covers A and B, but not a B and a C, not a B and a C. B and a C, the base, two bases different. Exponent base, exponential base three, log base E, all right? Exponential base E, log base three, different, all right? Yeah, so we can write this. A to the log base B, A. How about that? And A and B different. A and B different. All right, yeah. Then, base change formula. Base change formula. Yeah, yeah, but here, base change formula, yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, we not do, we do not yeah yeah we do not use directly yeah base change form we do not use directly yeah here here <laughs> the key is key is you need to know what is that first expression what is that. If you know that, that's the key. If you know th this expression or not, what is this? After simplification, what is this? What is this? Think about that. All right, yeah, that's the key. What is this? All right, so let me show you here. What is that? What is this? A log base A of N. What is this? Okay. Anyone, if you do not know, we need to do this. Yeah, so I'll say something. Could it just be like N because log base A to the N is the power needed to raise, um, um, is the power needed to make A equal to N? Correct. 
The answer is eh. Okay? The answer is eh. Okay? Something like cancellation. All right? Exponent based, log based, kind of kind of cancellation. Because you know, inverse. Inverse function of the exponential is the log function. You know, kind of that. Yeah. But if you do not feel comfortable, let me show you quickly. All right. Uh, let us show it. Okay. Proof. Proof. Can we let x be a to the log? This whole thing. How about that? Let x be that. Then let us take a natural log. How about, how, how about that? Oh, let us take not natural log, log base a. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because log base a is better because here we use log base a. Log base a, so if we use log base a, comparable, same base, we can do comparison. Okay, all right. When we take log base a both sides, left hand side we will get log base a of x. What is the right hand side? When we take log base a, we only have that, right? Yeah. We only have the exponent number. Yeah, let me. And because the log base part, log base a, a, this equals 1, right? When we take log base a, log base a and a, 1. Same base, 1, okay? So then you can see log base a of x equals log base a of n. So x equals n. How about that? <laughs> yeah. You take log base a, you can see get x and n the same. How about that? X, they have the same value and the log function monotonically increasing, right? Monotonic increasing, if they have the same value then the variable value should be the same, right? Yeah, variable, monotonic, increasing, okay? So the variable values should be the same, yeah. So you have this formula, okay? Yes. So this is our base formula for that question. Yeah, let me go back to that, that question. Where is that question? Yeah, here. All right. Yeah. Now let's go back to this question. Now for option B, option C, this time, because the base is different. To do the simplification, you need to use this formula. You need to because this formula will help you do the simplification. Yeah, so let me show you. Yeah. Let me show you one example. All right, so three uh, natural log, so three what? Yeah, three natural log of n, right? We want to do simplification of that, okay? All right. Three, yeah, because the natural log of the log base is E. Log base is E, okay? Yeah. It is not, not convenient to use different base. Base three, base E, the base different, not convenient. So we want to make same base so we can apply this formula. Yeah. But how? A little tricky here. Okay, first thing. Can you write x 
to what exponent number equals e? x to what exponent number? Or let's let's write this way, yeah, opposite way. X uh, three equals e to the what exponent number of x? No, e to the certain number x. X equals natural log of three, right? You take natural log both sides, right? Okay, yeah. Now three, you you write three as e to the e to the natural log of three. How about that? L n of three. How about that? Can you write three equal to this? Three replace three by this. Three equal this. Can you see that? Three equals e to the natural log of three. That's this formula. How about that? A, we use A as E. A becomes E, okay? E to the natural base E, natural log of N equals our N is three. How about that? How about that? Okay? So you have this, okay? Three equals this. Then we take three to the ln of m. How about e ln three ln of m? How about that? Both sides raised to natural log of nth power. How about that? Both sides, okay? Both sides raised to the same power. How about that? No problem, right? Yeah, base the same. Then we raise to the same power. Nothing wrong. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then e n three times. Exponential function property, right? Multiply together. Expo two exponent number multiply together, right? Yeah, multiply together. Okay, all right. When we multiply together, which one first, which one second, doesn't matter, right? Can we switch the order of those two numbers? Yeah, we can switch. Okay. Yeah. E natural log of n first okay we switch it's legal right yeah then can we write to the exponent form another time after we switch all right after we switch we write it another time e ln and ln 3 how about that Okay, Mul multiplication, but we go back to that form again. Okay, all right. But when you go back, look at the part in the parentheses. What's that? What's that? What's that? Yeah, let, let me show you the formula. Look at the formula. Look at this formula. Oh, sorry. E, replace A by E. E to the log base E, natural log of N, equals N, right? Then here, E to the same log base, natural log E, N. Is this N, right? So this tells us Jonathan here. Okay, all right. Let me check Jonathan. <coughs> all right. <coughs> hmm? yeah. 
All right. Equals n to the natural log of 3. How about that? How about that? Okay. Look at the work we did. Quite some work, right? Yeah. But at the end, you will see we convert, we convert 3 natural log of n to n as the base. Okay? n as the base. Natural log of 3. How about that? We did one, but we have four options. We did one option. We have four options. All four options, we can use the same N as the base. How about that? In this way, you can get for four options, you can use the same N as the base. Exponent numbers could be different. Exponent numbers different, base the same. When you do comparison, how easy it is. How easy it is. Yeah, because we convert. They have the same base comparison straightforward. If the base different, how to do the comparison? Think about that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, quite some math here. Yeah, but I hope you can follow. So you write down on your notes, so when you go home, study step by step. Make sure each step you understand well. Yeah. You can follow the logic. Then, that, that question, you know, relatively challenging. Yeah, I just say, yeah, question? Can you move the screen size a little bit? Screen what? Move. move the screen size size. All right, yeah, too small the screen. This place? Yeah, too small. Yeah. All right. Yeah, here. Yeah. So see here. Yeah. Or take picture. Or I can do the screenshot, you know, in, in some way. Yeah. 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 You can take picture. Yeah. Shift, shift, and uh, yeah, this place, this, I think, the end part. Oh, all right, yeah, okay. All right, yeah, uh, yeah, let, let us go back to our assignment, yeah. Yeah, let me do quickly, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I do not want to spend all the time. Yeah, just let, try to complete as the, quickly. Yeah. All right. The remaining part. Yeah. Remaining part. Yeah. Let me see. Remaining part. Yeah, all right. So remaining part, I think the meaning is uh, not hard to understand. Yeah, you just study work. So then, uh, you, when you have question, you can ask me. Yeah, but remember, you only have one week time. Yeah, so we can do discussion in the discussion board. I so whenever I have your questions, I will put answers in the discussion board. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you, you can see, you can read if that you know answers your questions. All right? Yeah. So uh, we have to stop here, continue our lectures. Yeah. First our module three, we still, we have last two topics. 
we need to finish. Now, yeah, probably our today we just finished those two topics. So then we start module four. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me see. Uh, right, good. So that's the, yeah, so beginning, beginning of this one, yeah, we need to start uh, from, from the beginning, yeah. Now, our last part of module three, two topics. One, Fibonacci formula general case. Remember, we verify the cases for small size number n. One, two, three. Yeah, actually, uh, let's say two, three. Yeah, because zero, one, given. Initial values, given. So we did verification last time for n equals two and a three. Today, we will do the general case. Second, linear solving, linear recurrence relations. These two topics. All right. First, D.3, prove Fibonacci formula for the general case. Prove. Mathematical induction. Mathematical induction. So here, I will go through the mathematical induction. Yeah. Last time I skipped one, I skipped. For the binary bits problem, I skipped that, that place. Because we have here, so we just do it once. Yeah. Not twice. Yeah. Mathematical induction. All right, yeah. So. Okay, yeah. First, we know the formula. Yeah, the formula here, golden ratio phi. All right. How to prove this formula is correct? Okay, mathematical induction, powerful tool. Yeah. We need to make induction assumption here. Yeah, here. When we make induction assumption, you need to do it carefully. Carefully. Yeah. So here, how, how do we do it? All right. Assume the formula is true for k in the range between 2 and n. All, if k is in that range, all of them correct. Fk can be represented in this way. All of them correct. Yeah. That's the induction assumption. You need to specify this range. Yeah. Otherwise, if you do not, yeah, so here I you can see I emphasize this range. I emphasize that range. Why? If I do not emphasize that range, for many beginners, for many beginners, they, they use a different way. Yeah, because there is, remember, uh, mathematical induction, there are two versions. So for mathematical induction, there are two versions version 1 and version 2. There are two versions. Version 1 is the easier version. Version 2, more powerful version. They are equivalent. Both versions equivalent. But version 1, easier version. So here, let me, if you use version 1, you cannot prove it. Okay? Here, if you use version 1, what is version 1? That means you make the induction assumption you only assume it's correct for k equals n. That's the version one, okay? Version one, you make the same assumption, but k equals n. Easier version, okay? Only at one point, easier version, all right? Version two, here we use the version two. Version two, you Assume more, k is in this whole range, 
whole range. That's the version two. Version one, version two, see? More powerful. And we need to use version two here. Yeah. All right. Let's start. Okay. Yeah, the goal, you can see, when k equals n plus one, we need to show it is correct. Verify it is correct. Because the, this k, n plus one, out of the range, right? Out of the range, you cannot use assumption directly. You have to really prove it. So you enlarge the range. If you can prove this or verify this, then you enlarge the range, right? The range for k that this formula is correct. You change this range to n plus 1. How about that? Okay? From n plus 1, it is true, you can change to n plus 2. How about that? You keep enlarge the range, sooner or later you will cover everything. How about that? That's the power of mathematical induction. Yeah. So here, let us only prove it is correct. Okay. So let's see how to prove it. Formula transformation. Yeah. That is our basic formula. Oh, yeah, because you replace capital M by N minus one, you have that. Must be true. Yeah, oh, yeah, that formula. Okay. But the N, look at the Fn. The subscript N is in the range, right? So we can use the assumption formula. Okay? So the first one comes from assumption formula. It's, we assume correct. Okay, don't worry about correctness. Yeah. Second, the subscript n minus one falls into that range again. So we can also use the assumption formula with k equals n minus one. How about that? It's correct, right? Yes. That's the reason we need to use version two, not version one. Version 1, if you use version 1, you can only use the first term. You cannot use the second one because you do not cover it, right? You only assume k equals m to, it, you cannot extend it to k equals m minus 1, right? Yeah. So that's the reason we need a version 2. Yeah. All right. Then, common factor 1 over root 5, take it out. Then inside, we put the, you know, polynomial or monomial terms together, right? Monomial terms together and the fractional terms together, okay? Yeah, put similar things together, okay? Put similar things together, all right? Because the similar math structures, they have the similar properties. So we put similar things together, okay? All right. Now, compare this formula and our target formula. What's the difference? This formula and a target formula. From the mathematical structure, can you see anything correlated? Relationship, mathematical structure, all right? We can ignore the one over root part because both they have the one over root, common. So we only need to compare whole thing inside the parenthesis. Parenthesis, all right? And you have a monomial part, this one, monomial part, that one, fractional part like that, fractional part like that. How about that? Similar structure, right? Similar structure, we should, can we try to prove? Yeah, we try to connect. How about that? We wish, so here, yeah, here, I mean like to this, we wish to have. How about that? We, we don't know if it's correct, but we wish to have, right? We want to verify it, okay? Yeah, we wish and we wish. If we can show these two equalities, we, we make it, right? We make it, okay? Yeah. By the logic, terms with similar structures should compare together, right? Same structure should do the comparison together. Can you do this kind of comparison with different structure? 
So that's not natural, right? Yeah, so that's the reason we should do something natural, okay? Intrinsic, all right, natural, yeah. All right, let, let, us, let us prove these two equalities. These two equalities, okay? All right, actually very easy. You will see very easy to make the proof. Yeah. Do we have this property? Do you remember we have two properties for golden ratio? Golden ratio. All right. Here, let me just recall. Yeah. So if you are not familiar with the property, let me just recall. Because the golden ratio satisfies this equation. Right? Yeah. We derive golden ratio from that equation. So that equation, there are two properties. Phi squared equals phi plus one, and one equals phi squared minus phi. Yeah. That are two commonly used properties for, for golden ratio. Here we use the first one, golden ratio. Okay? So if we start from this property, and we multiply phi to the n minus 1 power, both sides, what do we get? Do we get that, our first equality in the target? Our targeting first equality? Yeah. Similarly, let us do the second one. The second one, the fractional form, yeah. Can we do the backward thinking? Yeah, backward thinking. It's hard to do the, the first one. First, we do the forward thinking, right? Normal thinking. This one, we do the backward thinking. We hope to get that. In order to get that one, backward thinking, we multiply the common denominator. How about that? We need this after we multiply the common denominator, we get that. But so many negative one power, we want to simplify it. Multiply negative one and to the minus one, plus one minus one. We want to simplify it. We get a one equals n square, phi square, yeah, because positive, negative, we get that. That is our second, equal, second property of golden ratio. Second property of golden ratio. So it is correct. We know it is correct, right? So backward thinking, we get to a point that we know it must be correct. If it is correct, look at this double arrow, double direction arrow, yeah, we can go back, right? From here, we can get that uh, equality, okay? Yeah, because multiply that, right? From this one, we can go back to that one, also correct, yeah? Okay, also correct. Divide by phi to the n plus one, right? Do the division, right? Going back. That is correct, that means that is correct, so both correct. Both correct, that means, oh, yeah, sorry. That means, oh, yeah, uh, that one is correct. Right? Both correct, that means our targeting formula is correct. Okay, yeah, that's the mathematical induction whole procedure of mathematical induction. Okay, yeah. You need to do the, you need to do the, you know, to the proof, these two equalities using golden ratio two properties two properties of the golden ratio.
All right. Yeah. So that is the, our topic one. Or right. yeah, not going back. All right. Go to the next topic. Calculate. This time we need to calculate Fibonacci formula. And the method we use is linear recurrence relation. All right. So here we have a little more than 10 minutes. So let us do it. Before the break time, let's complete this last topic of module three. Yeah. All right. Before we start the solution, yeah. The name for this recurrence relation, look at the long name of it. Second order, two terms right hand side, second order, second order. One term, first order, okay? Look at the recurrence relation of Tower of Hanoi. Look at that. Recurrence relation of Tower of Hanoi, C sub n equals 2 c sub n minus 1 my, uh, plus 1, right? That is the recurrence relation. Only one term, one, you know, function term, okay? Not constant. You, you do not look at a constant, okay? Excluding the constant, only one term at the right-hand side. So that one we, you, we call the first order. Here, you have two terms excluding the constant term, second order linear homogeneous, linear. You have linear function. You do not see square, right? You do not see nonlinear term. Or each term is a linear term, okay? So linear, homogeneous. Homogeneous means the constant part equals zero. You don't have constant part. The constant part is zero. That is not homogeneous, okay? Because there is non-zero constant. Yeah. So homogeneous recurrence relation with constant coefficient. Coefficient one, coefficient one, constant coefficient. Look at the long name. Okay, yeah. So we we solve this type of equations. Yeah. All right. The general <laughs> form is like that. Yeah. Based on this description, yeah, so two terms, yeah, no constant, non-zero constant term, coefficient a, b, zero. Yeah, b cannot be zero, yeah, yeah, all right. If b equals zero, you, we get first order, right? Yeah, we get first order, yeah. This is gone, we get first order, yeah, okay, all right. For the Fibonacci, recurrence relation, A capital A equals B equals one. Okay, all right. Now, let us solve this linear recurrence relation. All right, all right. the standard way solution, four steps, four steps, okay, yeah. All right, yeah, but here I like to expose the special structure. So we take a special view of it. Yeah. Let us consider a sequence, A sub K. A sequence, okay. Make a guess. Remember, remember, in math, many times we need to make good guess. If our guess is good, we can find solution faster, easier, yeah. here. Let us guess the structure of the sequence. What is the structure? We make some reasonable guess here. Yeah. We make this guess. A sub k, we use t to the kth power. Yeah. This kind of structure. Yeah. Why make this guess? You may wonder why we make this guess. Why you are so smart to make a guess like that? Look at that. What is the solution for that one? Excluding, if we do not look at the constant part, is that solution in the form? That, the solution of first order recurrence relation, it has the structure, okay? 
So for the second order, we try the same structure. How about that? Okay, yeah, because we use this. The first order gives us, yeah, because the power of two, right? Here, this, we know the solution, power of two, two, okay? Yeah, power of t, how about that? Okay? t to be determined, how about that? Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. And we know this is a geometric sequence, geometric sequence, okay? Yeah, all right, yeah. All right, so here we do not look at the initial condition because we can fix it later. Here, we do, first, we do not worry about initial condition, all right? Can we find a solution with this structure? The question is, yeah, you have freedom to determine what T to use, what T to be used here, yeah. In that one, our T equals two, okay? Here, we don't know what is the T. For what T, T to the K satisfy that e equation. We don't know, yeah, all right. So, need to solve the equation, yeah? Because if you make an assumption with this structure, a sub k should be t to the k. a sub k minus one should be t to the k minus one, and so on, all right? Yeah, solving this equation is that easy, right? T, after simplification, you can do cancellation, right? After sim, t squared equals t plus one. We are familiar with this equation, right? Yeah, quadratic equation corresponds to golden ratio. Look at that, golden ratio. Fibonacci number connect to golden ratio. Why connect to golden ratio? Because of this equation. This equation we call a characteristic equation. Characteristic equation of this recurrence relation. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah, so that's the standard form. Then we apply the quadratic formula. We have two solutions, one T1, one plus root five over two, and T2, one minus root five over two. We have two solutions, T1, T2. Which T we should use? Should we drop the negative t? t1 is positive solution. t2 is negative solution. The question is, should we drop the negative solution and keep the positive solution? For golden ratio, we drop the negative solution. Think about that, golden ratio. Because we know the meaning of golden ratio. Two line segments, you take the ratio, that must be positive, right? But here, this t, how do you know this t is golden ratio? Not necessary, right? Any t satisfy this equation is okay. Think about that, any t is okay. So here t not necessary, it's not golden ratio. If it's not golden ratio, we have no reason to drop t2, right? We should keep t2. We cannot drop t2, we keep t2. So we have two solutions, all right? So we use both, we need to use two solutions together, okay? Yeah, so two solutions, when we raise to kth power, they both satisfy that equation. They both, yeah. The first T1, you plug in, you plug in, satisfy the recurrence relation, all right? The second one, you plug in, you also, you have the, that, recurrence relation. Two possible solutions, right? But one thing, both, they are not integer solutions. And the Fibonacci numbers must be integer solutions. But here we get two non-integer solutions. How do we fix the gap? There is a gap. Integer solutions, non-integer solutions, there is a gap. So how do we fix that gap? Okay, yeah, so here, creativity. Remember in the first class, I mentioned that creativity. This place, when you have a gap, you need to really do something creative to fix the gap. All right, 
here. Look, the next question. Can we combine two non-integer solutions to form one integer solution? That's the key step. Combine two non-integer solutions to form an integer solution. How about that? That idea. Okay? Two non-integer solutions. We combine in a smart way, hopefully after some cancellation. Both non-integer part they can be canceled out. Only integer part left. How, how good it is. Right? So the key is smart way to do the combination. Smart way to do that combination. Okay? So the next step, what kind of combination we want to do? All right. Here, so you will see yeah, some special combination. Yeah. All right, yeah. We still, we need to make sure our integer solution satisfies the initial condition. Yeah. All right, the question. How to use two special solutions without initial condition? Yeah. And non-integer to get a new solution with initial condition and they are integer solutions? Yeah. So our next question, okay. Is there a special way to combine two solutions? Special way to combine two solutions. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, let me stop here. Yeah. Yeah. Because to third, uh, to 20, yeah. After you come back at 2.30, with fresh mind, then let us complete the remaining steps, combination. Because there is an important concept. I want, do not want to be in a rush, you know, before the break time. There is a very important concept. I want to spend a little more time to talk about that. Yeah. All right, take a break. Still, 10 minutes break. Yeah. <laughs>